Hello and welcome back to Football Scrutiny. This is a tactical preview of the Champions League final between Paris Saint-Germain and Bayern Munich. Before we get into it, if you haven't already checked out the semi-final analysis of Paris Saint-Germain against RB Leipzig, check that out. And if you also haven't checked out the Olympic Lyonnais game against Bayern Munich in that other semi-final, also go ahead and check that out. It's worthwhile checking out both analysis to get a real feel for this cup final. So let's get into the analysis then, starting by Bayern's lineups over the last few games. They've kept the same side for the last two games. The only doubt for me in this game will be if Kimmich switches with Pavard and Thiago perhaps misses out with Kimmich coming inside into that double pivot. PSG, well, you would imagine they'll line up with exactly the same front three, Neymar, Di Maria and Mbappe. The only doubt is if Verratti is able to make the starting lineup. So the main things that we're going to look at is going to be starting with the high line from Bayern Munich. They play with a really high line in recent weeks and they've been caught out on a number of occasions. Here against Barcelona in their match, really high line in the first few minutes of the match. Ball played in behind, opportunity for Barca to score. Also in the Barcelona game when Vidal comes inside and Alba overlaps onto the opposite side. We can also imagine this happening with Neymar and Juan Banat. Neymar coming inside frequently, Juan Banat is quick, and if the ball comes over, it'll be difficult to stop. As we can see here in the game against Barcelona, you're the Alba there. If we can imagine that's Juan Banat, it could be exactly the same result. Opportunity on goal. In the game against Lyon, quite frequently they got caught out in the first 20 minutes of the game. Here there's a lost possession in the middle of the pitch, and the two centre-backs really far apart, and Depay able to get in. If we can imagine that that's Mbappe, there's going to be real problems for Bayern if they have that high line and they get caught out. Another opportunity for Lyon, high line, Depay getting in behind, it would be exactly the same with Neymar, with Mbappe and with Di Maria. Another example, this time lucky that they managed to cut out that pass across, if not that's 1-0, also the cutback option was available. And again, 16th minutes, that was four times in the first 16 minutes of the game. A couple of times it happened against Barcelona as well. Really high line where they get caught out. Even though Davies is quick, Mbappe is super quick as well. So yeah, so that is going to be a problem if they have that high line. People being able to break into that space in behind that line. Although Neuer is really quick off his line, and really good in one away in the situations. They have to be careful of it, they have to be very aware. Now we're going to take a look at the PSG defensive mid-block. Against Leipzig, they were picking up these positions. Three strikers pressing that, playing out from the back with three. Low by and play out with two. The same thing holds up where they try and block those passes into the fullbacks. Okay, so here's that high press, or that mid-block. Really tight in the middle. So Bayern Munich will obviously try to be forced out onto the wings. As we can see, any pass coming into a centre back, they're going to jump out and press. Any pass coming in on the floor into those high full backs or high wing backs in this case, they would be pressured as well. Okay, so this is what I'm imagining in the game. Di Maria blocking off passes into Davies, Mbappe blocking off passes into Kimmich. Also, trying to block passes coming inside into Nabry and inside into Perisic with Neymar blocking off Thiago. What we can also expect is exactly what was happening with Leipzig this time with a defensive midfielder Thiago if he plays dropping back in between those two centre-backs and trying to play out and that would give us a very similar situation against Leipzig. If they lose the ball here they are in real problems with that pace from those three so it's going to be really interesting. Paris Saint-Germain's positional attack then for me, this is going to be a key. Is Neymar going to stick onto that left-hand side with Banat? Is Kimmich going to be two against one against Neymar in a Banat? And also, when Neymar comes inside, either on his own or with Herrera, either side, if they play with one pivot, then they're going to have problems. And if they play with Neymar coming inside, they're also going to have problems with who's going to pick him up. So here's that example of that back three with the defensive midfielder like a pivot. So here's that example of a diamond from them playing out. 
from the back and then the movement from Neymar and Bernat. So we can expect that against PSG. Lots of players inside Bayern Munich are going to have to be nice and compact to be able to defend against this. And here's that example with Neymar getting in behind and any passes into there and you're going to have to come out and press him really quickly if you haven't got a nice defensive compact midfield. So here's that example then, two against one potentially with Kimmich happening if he plays. That's why I think the Pavard might get the nod ahead of him. And also with that positioning of Neymar inside, who's going to then be responsible for him? Is it going to be Thiago? Mm, I think perhaps Kimmich is going to move inside in place of Thiago and Pavard is going to drop into that right back role. I can imagine PSG pressing high, trying to catch Bayern Munich out. Here's an example against RB Leipzig where they pressured the ball high and managed to win back possession and score a goal on the counter-attack. This is going to be a major influence in the match. If Nabry's coming inside onto that favoured left foot of his, then one Bernat is going to struggle coming inside on his right foot. That should allow Nabry those movements inside to cause problems just like he did against Lyon. The clever movements from Bayern Munich, especially from Müller and Lewandowski, also on that right-hand side of Nabry. You can imagine it's going to cause problems, but against RB Leipzig, PSG were nice and compact in those middle areas. I think this game is going to be more won in the wide areas for Bayern Munich from Nabry and from Davies, using the pace and power of both of them to try and get an advantage. I can see these passes being blocked off by those midfielders from PSG and from those forwards holding their position in the middle of the pitch and forcing the play to be played with Davies or Nabry on the left and on the right respectively. So in conclusion, I think that these are the key factors towards this match is that midfield press, that compact defending from Paris Saint-Germain in the middle of the pitch. It should prevent Bayern from playing as much through the middle and if they win the ball back, they should be able to make quick transitions with so much pace up front could cause Bayern a lot of problems. And then the other deciding factor could be that positional play from Paris Saint-Germain with Neymar getting either behind the double pivots or staying out wide and playing with Juan Bernat in that two against one situation against the Bayern fullback. I would expect Bayern Munich to press high, try and force Paris Saint-Germain into those long kicks. Don't let them get comfortable on the ball. However, if that high press fails, I imagine that they'll drop back after that high press and not keep that high defensive line like they have in recent matches. If they don't, and they do keep a high defensive line, it's going to be very interesting indeed. Is Kimmich going to play, uh, or is Pavard going to come back in at right back, or is Kimmich or Thiago going to play in that centre midfield role? And of course, those two men, Davies and Nabry, expect their pace to cause Paris Saint-Germain lots of problems in the fence. So. One thing's for certain, this won't be a nil-nil match. Hopefully everyone looks forward to it and keep an eye out for our tactical analysis post-game from the Champions League final.